G'day guys and welcome back to Unimic. Trying to find the perfect tungsten electrode for the TIG weld you're planning can seem like a bit of a mission. There are quite a few tungsten types on the market and every single one of them does something different, even if it is just slightly. Today, we're gonna to walk you through all the tungstens that Unimig offers to help you get the most out of your TIG welds. Quite simply, a tungsten is a non-consumable electrode that's used in conjunction with your choice of filler wire to create a weld. Every tungsten is roughly 95% give or take pure tungsten, which used to be the only kind of tungsten you could get, with some additional ingredients mixed in for better results in certain areas. The important thing to remember is that there are several different types of tungsten, each with their own unique properties and limitations. All of our tungstens are color coded so you can easily differentiate them with a quick glance. If you take a quick look at this guide featured in our Ultimate Welding Guide, which you can get online from our website, link below, you can see some of the more obvious differences between the different tungsten types. We've ranked each type of tungsten based on their performance in certain conditions and material types. But what do all the dots on our chart actually mean? How easily does the arc start? A good arc ignition will look slightly different depending on how you're creating it, lift versus high frequency but it should generally look like a flare of light with a soft puff noise. A good arc will come out in a cone shape. A few factors can contribute to how your arc starts, but if all your machine settings are correct and your tungsten still starts with little light and remains dull or weak looking, it doesn't have a good arc ignition. How long does a tungsten last before it needs grinding or do you need a new one? Tungstens has the highest melting point of any metal on the periodic table, but that doesn't mean it's gonna last forever. Every tungsten handles amp rates differently, and the higher the amps, the faster some tungstens lose their tips. There are a few things that will make your tungsten last longer. One is proper tip preparation, grinding the end of the tungsten to a point or ball, depending on the application. The other is being careful not to dip them. Both of these are a great way to make the most out of your tungsten. Does the arc flicker or blow out? Is it consistent all the way across the weld? Once the arc has started, it should look like a cone-shaped light that remains totally solid. It shouldn't flicker or wander or blow out if it's stable. Some things can affect this, like using low amps on thick electrodes or alternative current, which is more likely to flicker even when stable and pulse welding will flick in and out as the arc moves between the amp ranges. In general though, your arc should be steady and maintain that cone appearance for the entire weld. One of the main ways that a tungsten becomes contaminated is by dipping it. There are two ways you can dip it. The first way, by touching the tungsten itself into the workpiece. Not a lot will stick to the tungsten generally and your weld pool should be relatively clean anyway, but if your tip has touched the pool, it will cause a blast of oxide and other contaminations. When you stub your electrode, you might not always lose the tip's shape, but the next time you weld with it, it's gonna blow all sorts of contaminants into the start of your weld. The second way to dip your tungsten is by touching your filler metal rod directly onto it. Instead of the rod melting into your weld pool, it is now coating the outside of your electrode. This causes instant contamination of your tungsten, and a lot of the time, it'll cause the arc to wander. Long-term constant use of the same tungsten will also naturally build up contaminants, like discoloration from the gas and oxidization, even if you're cleaning it regularly. If you've dipped your tungsten into the weld pool, don't worry, you're not the first, and even seasoned welders will slip up sometimes. It can be a bit of a pain as you'll need to re-grind it into shape before you can continue to use it. If you've dipped the filler rod directly onto the tungsten, these can still be salvaged and reground. You'll just need to snap the contaminated end off. This is also true of long-term use contamination and discoloring. You can snap the contaminated part off and grind it into shape until it gets too short to use. Tungstens that are more resistant to contamination will not suffer as much discoloration or have as many contaminants stick to the tungsten if it is dipped and will take longer to dirty from the extended use. How well does a tungsten work when used on an alternating current? AC welding is only used when welding aluminium or magnesium alloys, as you can't use DC for them. AC means that the way the current flows both ways and a cycle is completed when it has flowed one way and then back the other way. This back and forth of the current has different effects on tungstens than the DC direct current does. And some tungstens are better suited for AC applications. What happens if I use a thoriated or any other DC specific electrode on AC? We ask ourselves the same thing. The answer, you ruin the tungsten. When the button is pressed for high frequency, the tungsten fizzles and burns up back into the cup and there's no saving it. 
We definitely don't recommend trying it, and if you need to other aluminium, zirconioated tungstens are the best. Thoriated tungstens were the second type of tungsten that became available, so a lot of the time they're used as a reference point when comparing how the others, or newer tungstens, perform. These tungstens contain a small amount of thorium mixed in with pure tungsten, approximately 2%. Thoriated tungstens were the first to have an oxide mixed with pure tungsten. They can't be used for AC, the tungsten just burns back into the cup if you try, but they perform well on DC. In technical terms, the added thorium boosts the electron emission qualities in the tungsten. In simple terms, the added thorium means the tungsten needs a lower amount of heat to start and maintain an arc, which has a bunch of benefits. Good arc starts, a very stable arc, a high current carrying capacity, it operates below its melting point, which improves its lifespan significantly. It doesn't spit, so there's less chance of contamination. It maintains a sharpened point. And our thoriated tungstens are 2% thoriated and marked with a red tip. They used to be the best for any DC TIG welding, but they're no longer as popular. The problem? They are radioactive. The risk is minimal, but the problems occur when the thorium enters the lungs. While welding with a thoriated tungsten isn't dangerous, prepping them can be. Preparing the tungsten with a grinder means that the previously trapped thorium is now out in the air where it can be dangerous. Unless your contract requires you to use them, it's best to find an alternative, like lanthanated. These tungstens contain a small amount of lanthanum mixed in with the pure tungsten. The added lanthanum in the tungsten gives it a roughly 50% increase in its current carrying capacity, compared to thoriated. Do note, the current capacity of a tungsten is how many amps it can be run on before it starts to deteriorate. Lanthanated tungstens also work well on both AC and DC. Plus they have one of the best arc starts, especially on DC, a very stable arc, a low burn off and erosion rate, so they last a long time, excellent reignition, so there's no sticking on restarts, they don't spit, which means less weld contamination, they strike and maintain an arc at low or high amperages, they can be sharpened to a point, which keeps its shape well, or they can be balled. These tungstens are 1.5% lanthanated and marked with a gold tip. Lanthanated tungstens also share the same conductivity characteristics as thoriated tungstens. Do note, these characteristics mean that electricity passes through them with the same amount of ease and they conduct heat in the same way. Unlike thoriated electrodes, they aren't radioactive, which is why they're considered the best general purpose tungsten and a good replacement for thoriated. These tungstens contain a small amount of zirconium mixed in with the pure tungsten. They can't be used for any DC work, but they are perfect for AC. They ball well and retain the shape. They have an incredibly stable arc. Zirconium is a strong metal, so it doesn't split or spit and contaminate the weld. It handles high amps well, which is perfect for aluminium. Its current carrying capacity is the same and sometimes better than thoriated. Our zirconiated tungstens are 0.8% zirconiated and marked with a white tip. They are the go-to tungsten for all of your AC welding because that's what they're designed for. Rare earth tungstens have a mix of different oxides added to them, which can vary depending on which brand and where you get them from. Unimig's rare earth tungstens are a combination of lanthanum 1.5%, zirconium 0.08%, and yttrium 0.08%. The combination of several oxides together means it works great on AC and DC. Plus, you get great arc starts, a very stable arc in AC and DC, one of the longest electrode lifespans with less regrinding needed than usual, little to no spitting, the ability to use a smaller diameter tungsten on a job can handle higher amperages, even with a smaller tungsten. Unimig's rare earth tungstens are marked with a purple tip. Rare earth tungstens also share the same conductivity characteristics as thoriated tungstens. These tungstens contain a small amount of cerium mixed in with the pure tungsten. Seriated works best on DC, though it does still run on AC. It's the most popular tungsten when it comes to welding thinner materials, thanks to some of its unique properties. Excellent arc starts at low amps. It runs best on DC with low current settings. Good reignition, great arc stability. Now our seriated tungstens are 2% and marked with a gray tip. Because of the way cerium oxide behaves when they're heated to extreme temperatures, it's not recommended to use them on high amperage applications. Higher amps cause a cerium to concentrate at the tip of the tungsten electrode or the hottest point. That means the rest of the tungsten is empty of its added oxide, rendering any benefits null and void. On the flip side though, because cerium works so well on lower amperages, seriated tungstens are perfect for use on sheet metal and thin piping or tubing. 
Okay, that's a look at all the different types of tungstens that we offer at Unimig. Each have their advantages and disadvantages. Hopefully this has helped you understand the key characteristics of each of the tungsten. Which tungstens do you use the most? Let us know down in the comments. Until next time, bye for now.